Son of the living God, to whom is due all glory. Forever. Oh, 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 amen. After these things, we went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. But their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast? while the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise the new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled. And the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put in new wineskins, and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new. For he says the old is better. Glory be to God forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, and the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Misra, and as we were saying, this is. Um, the time where the church prepares us for the end um, <clears throat> and to remind us of what we need to do before we see and meet and are judged by, by uh, our Lord. Um, <clears throat> and today we see uh, or hear of the story of uh, St. Matthew or Levi, the tax collector, who, as the gospel starts, after these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him, then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, we see the transformation, we see the calling, we see the service, and we see the joy that is brought forth from this one instance. Um, and the service of St. Matthew the Apostle um, is, is proof of, of the lasting transformation that happens in a person when the Lord uh, comes to him, calls him, directs him in his service or her um, <clears throat> and leaves a lasting impression that not only lasts for the life of that person, but also um, uh, is able to have the power to transform others in, in their life. <clears throat> so the Lord many, did many things in the flesh that um, doesn't add up when you look it, at it only from a worldly perspective. Um, so here today we have a man called Levi, which actually means connected or attached. And you know, the first Levi was whom in the scriptures? The son, son of Jacob, right? Uh, the, the third son. And he was called to, to the priesthood, right? That's where you get the Levites, right? Um, <clears throat> And, and so even though his name um, means something good, he was supposed to be consecrated for the service of the altar and the work of God. 
However, when you look at the life before this moment, it was the complete opposite. And he was supposed to be serving the altar. He was serving himself, supposed to be at um, the um, tabernacle um, or the temple. He was um, in the tax office. <clears throat> he was supposed to be surrounded by uh, righteous, holy people. And um, as we see later, he's surrounded by tax collectors and sinners. Um, and St. Cyril of Alexandria said, said, Levi was a publican, a man greedy for dirty money, filled with uncontrollable desire to possess, careless of justice in his eagerness to have what did not belong to him. And um, I think to some extent for, for all of us, we have the same experience at least some time in our life where we're supposed to be doing something and we're doing the opposite. We're supposed to have this specific identity of being close to God, but we're close to sin, close to our own desires. Um, <clears throat> And, but the beauty of it is that God doesn't leave him or judge him or criticize him. He comes, he comes to him. Um, and he only has to say two words um, and his life is changed. Um, <clears throat> and this is unexplainable by human logic and human standards, right? It almost appears foolish. Uh, but for those of us who know and have read the gospel and have tasted the power of, of the word of God in our life, we say, of course. And even we're at some point um, jealous or we wish this would have happened to us personally. <clears throat> um, so he had a great blessing, a great opportunity. And we look at the circumstances with a spiritual enlightened understanding and we say, of course, this happened. Um, and... Um, then we look at our own lives, and of course, this doesn't happen. <laughs> Sometimes we, we read the gospel of, of a saint um, or, or a saint story, and we say, yes, this makes complete sense. But will it happen in, in some um, sim similar circumstances to me? No, that can't be possible. No, the, the whole purpose of, of reading and, and learning and um, remembering the scriptures is to remind us that God is the same God of the Old Testament and the New Testament and of now. And he, just like he was the God of the prophets and the God of the apostles, he's my God too. Um, <clears throat> and so when we read these things, um, it inspires us to imitate the, the same one. So what uh, I just will summarize, you know, um, this transformation that happened, right? Um, was three simple steps. He heard, he followed, and then he shined. Um, uh, so the physical transformation of a person's life happens um, after tasting um, or witnessing the glory of God. Um, we don't know exactly what happened before this, what Levi saw and what he witnessed, but I'm pretty sure before this moment, he knew who Christ was. And when Christ came to him, he, he was just probably waiting for the Lord to say these two words. And uh, he was ready to give up everything. <clears throat> so for us, we need to ask, what, what am I witnessing? What is going on inside? And what am I listening to? Am I, uh, is the Lord telling me, follow me, or do this, or do that, and I'm not? Um, <clears throat> or am I not even giving him an opportunity to speak? these words to me. Um, <clears throat> so because the, Levi heard the call from the Lord Jesus, who was, who was as we know, Lord and Christ, he followed. Um, and uh, as you know, we're coming upon the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration, um, which is most of the time is not on a Sunday. We, um, this year is on Friday. Um, so we don't have the opportunity to read from from the passages, um, but the Lord uh, or the church selected the passage. Um, all three gospels, um, of course, are read in Matthew 17, Mark 9, and Luke 9 um, during the, the feasts, right? From the Vespers gospel, the Matins gospel, and, and the Liturgy gospel. But the, the Catholic epistle is written by St. Peter, who was there, right? And he says, um, 
we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? The theme of, you know, the next few weeks is the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. What is he talking about? Eyewitnesses of his majesty. Indirectly, he's talking about the transfiguration. Um, <clears throat> he says, for he, Christ, received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain, Mount Tebel. Right? Um, <clears throat> and then he s starts to explain the same transformation that happens to the person who witnesses the glory of God. Just like it happened with Levi, just like it happened with Zacchaeus, just like it happened with S the Samaritan woman and St. Moses the Strong and hopefully all of us as well. Um, when? So again, the first step was to hear the prophetic word confirmed. He says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed. And that's the second step as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. So here, St. Peter is also describing the three-step process of hearing, following, and shining, right? <clears throat> so we need to hear the word of God, the prophetic word that is confirmed, um, and give opportunity for the Lord to speak to me in my life. Reading the scriptures um, <clears throat> or spiritual books or listening uh, to sermons or growing in knowledge of, of, of the spiritual things um, is not just a task that each person has to do because we have to be experts um, or PhDs in theology, um, but it's so that God can shine in our hearts. It's so that we can be closer to God and know him better and, and know the things that pertain to the kingdom of heaven more. So if we're not opening um, our lives at least a few minutes a day to let this word speak to our hearts, then there will be no transformation. Um, <clears throat> So that, that, that's the first step, to hear. Um, and then when we hear, we follow. He says, um, so he, here he's talking the light is not just um, the glory of God that was seen on Tabor, but here's the light of the knowledge of God. Um, and he says, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Um, <clears throat> and so when we follow the word, the word takes a place in us, and this light begins to shine from within. It says, when the, when the light um, that shines in a dark place, the day will dawn and the morning star will rise. This is the sun, right? Um, so you say the sun is going to rise not from outside, but from within. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, again, the step is to be first eyewitnesses of his majesty by beholding his glory in my life, opening my eyes, to see the to want even to see the glory of God. Where is God in my life? I need to always continually ask. What is He trying to speak to me and and teach me um, today? Um, is the light shining or not, and why? <clears throat> um, so just being in the presence of God not only enlightens my eyes and my face as Moses on the mountain, but it enlightens my heart. <clears throat> and this is the purpose of of um, like letting the light shine of God helps. It, it just doesn't happen in the church or with um, a saintly person, um, but it grows. It grows to the extent of one candle can, can um, share its light with millions of other candles. <clears throat> and so um, this is what happened with Levi of today. Um, so what's the last step, the shining, right? To, to be like him, to be changed. Um, we don't deserve the grace of God, but in his love, he comes to us and he comes for us and hope that um, we recognize his, his light and his love and his compassion and his mercy and, and desire to, to be just close to him and to be like him. <clears throat> so what's the first thing that Levi did when he heard these words? He left all. He rose, he followed, he prepared a feast. Um, and so this is what we do if our life is truly changed by the transfigured Lord in our life, right? Um, we leave all the things of the world 
at least in our hearts, we rise from the, the lifestyle that is not pleasing to him, and we follow. And when we follow, we're rejoicing. And not only that, but we bring others to rejoice with us, not only for our sake, but for their sake as well. <clears throat> um, and so, um, same thing again happened with Zacchaeus. He gave back as much as he could, even more than what probably what he could. Um, same thing happened to the Samaritan woman. She told everyone in, in the city and brought them uh, to him in one way or another. Um, <clears throat> so, um, St. Peter talks about this uh, transformation that happened to him, but also that happens to each individual. Even though when he was on the holy mountain, he kind of didn't know exactly what to say, right? Um, he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, right? <clears throat> um, and even though he, he, he was kind of confused, um, and the Lord even didn't acknowledge this request, the church takes this and says, yes, uh, when we have the transformation and transfiguration revealed to us in our life, we need to do something, right? Um, and uh, at the consecration of the cornerstone um, and even of a church, actually there's three types of consecrations. We won't go into the details, but hopefully you will come um, this, this Thursday night to, to see for yourselves. But um, regarding the church things, um, there's, there's a consecration for the vessels and, and, and the altar, which, which is a very special uh, prayer. Um, but there's actually also a consecration for the entire church. It's very rare, um, and it's probably one of the longest prayers that we have um, in, in, in the church rites, um, maybe even longer than what we do on Bright Saturday. Um, <clears throat> uh, and it's, a, it's all night prayer that ends uh, with liturgy. Um, and there's several prayers and praises and, and scriptures that are read. And the, the holy oil, the chrism, is, is used not only to anoint the altar, but uh, there, all around the church. Um, and there's so many readings that are read. Um, but actually, there's one part where, uh, and there's many gospels that are read as well, but there's one part where they read four gospels in a row, kind of like what we do on Palm Sunday uh, or Great Friday, right? And guess what the first three Gospels are? The Gospel of the Transfiguration, right? What we were just talking about. Um, Matthew 17, Mark 9, Luke 9. <clears throat> and then because St. John didn't write about that, it's uh, taken from a different place. Um, and uh, for the consecration of the cornerstone, which we will do Thursday night, guess what the gospel is going to be? The gospel is a transfiguration, which was not, I didn't know this before, but I was, I was joyful to say, okay, God is directing um, this um, to be on this specific day for this specific purpose. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say <laughs> is the transfiguration is uniquely relating, related to the building, not only of the church, but the building of my spiritual life. Um, and so I need to see and witness and hear and obey, and then I will be able to not, o not only be changed, but my change will be inward and outward as well. So the transformation is supposed to start from inside out, um, and it's, it's not focused like sometimes people focus just on the outward spiritual exercises. It's good for a period of time to a certain extent, but if that's the only thing we're focused on, where's Christ? Um, sometimes even people can be led into heresy and say, no, I have to do this many matanias, or I have to say the Jesus prayer this many times, or I have to um, pray from one, two, three, or else God will not accept me. That's, God is not, um, I mean, this is what the Pharisees were um, uh, condemned for, right? Because they clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside is, is full of all uncleanness. We don't want this to happen to us. Of course, prayer is very important. It's not what I'm saying. Fasting is very important, but we do it with the right intentions and the right goal. Is, is We want to see the light of Christ in our life. Um, <clears throat> and so the idea here is that my spiritual life should be the cornerstone of everything. 
when, when we come to bring the cornerstone, right, or thing that goes underneath the altar, we have to put a cross. We have to put a gospel because this is, this is the cornerstone of our faith, right? In the early days, where would they build the churches? Like in, in the first few centuries, the location of the church was already kind of pre-designated. Hmm? It was underneath where they built the, the catacombs or the, the relics of the saints. So we say these saints lived the life of Christ and they, most of them died and shed their blood for, for the Lord. And this faith is, is the seed of the church, like Tertullian says. Um, and, but we don't have the relics of the saints anymore. At least, um, like, for example, when uh, St. Nina appears uh, to, to, to the lady to build a church, she, he, he shows her this is the place of where my relics are, then build a ch church here. Right? So we could bring relics and we can place them under the, the, the church. But the idea here is that um, what is the cornerstone of our faith is, uh, or, or our church is the faith. Is, is, the, is the belief um, of, of what happened with Levi of, of today. Um, <clears throat> and so um, the altar should be the cornerstone of my life. It should be similar to when uh, King Solomon um, prayed the prayer of dedication in 1 Kings 8. Um, he, he finally fulfills the desire of, of his father, um, uh, King David, to build the, the temple for the Lord. And and when he before he offers all the sacrifices, just like before Levi um, has the great feast in his house, he, he asks the Lord in a sense, um, when it, whenever uh, someone um, falls astray, or whenever someone sins, or whenever there is a foreigner, or whenever there is a, a war, when we come to the altar and we pray this, hear and and answer and bless and forgive right <clears throat> so that should be the same thing in my life whenever something good happens to me and god bless me in my life i come to the altar and and I offer a prayer of thanksgiving and praise whenever i'm in difficulties and needing his guiding hand i come to the altar and ask for his guidance and peace when i say altar i mean the, the church as a whole not even just physically but even spiritually um when um I am in, uh, when there's a pandemic, or when we're sick, or when uh, we're, there, we're struggling for something, we go to the Lord. We go to the, the altar is the cornerstone. And that's why in the early days with um, the 12 tribes, where was the tabernacle um, geographically with the 12 tribes? They would divide the, the 12 into four, uh, three groups of, uh, sorry, four groups of three, and they would pretty much, um, except for the tribe of Levi, which was different for, for obvious reasons. And in the center was, was the tabernacle. Um, <clears throat> so is, is the altar, is the church the center? Is God the center of my life um, or not? Um, and so um, this is how we feel towards uh, the altar, towards the church. Um, so in conclusion, I want to see the light of Christ. I want not daily in my life, um, not just weekly or every year. Or No, I, I need to see and hear and follow and obey and let his light shine um, upon me and through me and in me. Um, and glory be to now and to the age of the Saying, Blessed are you oh, among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Intercede on our behalf, O Lady of the Soul, the Theotokos, Mary, the Mother of our Savior. Be me.